It's tabletop time. I'm Dave, and in today's video, we're going to be returning to the Sakura Tau. That's right, I'm making a massive and awesome mech, and it wouldn't be possible without the brand new 3D printers that we've been sent by Hay Gears. This is the Hay Gears Ultracraft Reflex, and we are going to be showing you this brand new printer throughout this video, and it's really exciting. But before we can revisit the Sakura and get printing, I need a model, and I have exactly the model in mind that I want to join my Sakura set. So the Tau Storm Surge is one of the few models in the range that I've never liked, and an amazing creator, Piper from Piper Makes over on Patreon, created a model called the Narwhal that I've wanted for years. Piper was nice enough to send us that model, as well as all the cool exclusive accessories, such as the SFX missiles and weapons, for me to print and paint in this video. So while I get my perfect mech model all ready, Murray is actually downstairs setting up the printer. So let's see how he went. With Murray working on the setup of the printer, I could focus on the software. Hey Gears have an online hosted slicing software called Blueprint. Blueprint is completely integrated with your printer, allowing you to remotely check the status of your printer, temperature, any errors, or perhaps the resin level of the printer, as well as allowing you to remotely load up and start prints, which is super convenient. So I set up the first slices for this model, and if Murray's finished, I can go and start the first print. All right now that the first slice of the model is put together and sent off to the printer, all that's left for me is to wait for the Ultracraft Reflex to do its magic. So the last prints are done and I can finally assemble this beast, which is really exciting. I've got two here that need to be cleaned and I wanted to show you this really nifty Hay Gears cleaning system. I've got it on a different table because uh, as you're about to see, it makes a bit of ruckus and we don't want to bump the 3D print. So let's go check it out. Ah! The way this works is there's two little buckets and you just put your prints in isopropyl alcohol in the buckets and you put the lid on. Check this out. <laughs> I don't know why to me, this is just ridiculously entertaining. Uh, it's just the jiggly. <laughs> Jiggling complete! And it gives you a nice little tune. So, rather than popping this off and fishing out 3D prints, this is the really cool bit that I like. Bucket, bucket. And you just turn this, and all the ISO drains into the second bucket. Which is really good because it means you're not fishing around in isopropyl alcohol full of resin. And you can easily clean these buckets, which is really cool. And at the end of all that, I have my clean bits, which is good. Awesome. Let's go make a towel battle suit. Hiya! So as with all resin 3D prints, one of the first things you need to do after getting them off the print bed is remove all the supports. So I gave these a hot water bath, which just helps keep the resin nice and flexible and it allows you to peel these supports off pretty easily. All right, so now all we have to do is do a post cure of the resin and Hay Gears have that covered with their curing machine. So we just pop the door open and easy as that. Chucking our bits. Good to go. So you might have noticed our printer looks pretty fancy. That's because it is the brand new Hay Gears Ultra Craft Reflex. The Ultra Craft Reflex brings professional simplicity, ease of use, and style to the home printer workbench. With high precision hardware and image algorithms, the Reflex produces extremely accurate prints with a stable and consistent production quality. From the very start of this process, Hay Gears has you covered. With their own set of 3D printing tools that automate the whole process, from pre-processing to production and then post-processing. The machine can detect humidity, temperature, and resin levels. Some features that I personally fell in love with were the resin feeding and also the auto leveling process. For the resin feeding, all you need to do is just stick the bottle in the top of the printer and it takes care of it from there. While when it comes to leveling, I don't even know what that that is. The machine handles it all for you, dealing with leveling and zeroing so you don't have to do that between each print. And I have genuinely never had an easier time removing prints from the print bed than I have with the Hay Gears Ultracraft Reflex. With Hay Gears professional grade resin and dual wavelength UV curing process, you can expect commercial grade results with every print. Not only is this 3D printer brand new, but also the curing station and the wash station. So with that said, please make sure to go and check out the Hay Gears Ultracraft Reflex 
Duplex if you're interested in 3D printing or if you're ready to experience a more professional 3D printing process at the home hobby level. But for now, it's time for me to get back to the video and start painting up this creation. Now this model comes in a lot of pieces with a lot of options. And one thing it's really well kitted out for is actual magnet slots. However, we don't have a lot of the magnet sizes that this kit is slotted for. And I have no desire to change almost all of the components on this. So I'm gonna be gluing a lot of things in place that you can magnetize on the kit. And that's just a personal choice. The only thing I'm gonna leave magnetizable is the gun so I can rotate it. Cause I think that's really cool. And also the gun at the front of the model so you can swap out the weapon options. As I was assembling the multi-part legs of this walker, I did realize I was gonna need to build this from the ground up. It's not a usual approach I would make for modeling, but we have these gorgeous articulatable legs. I may as well use them, right? So I'm gonna grab a base and I think I'm gonna build up a scenic base before I assemble the model. So Piper's model, the Narwhal, is actually shipped on a 185 millimeter round base, which isn't the base a storm surge goes on. And of course this will be a storm surge proxy. So I've brought the appropriate sized base. This is actually uh, not quite a Games Workshop base, but it's quite similar. It's almost the same size. It's, it's like two mil more narrow. So I'm gonna have to fix that. But this is gonna be an interesting challenge to mount this bigger model with a large footprint on a smaller base. So I'm probably gonna make some rocks protrude and build out the base and just do something interesting with it. Let's... Taking that 175 mil flying base, I grabbed some large chunks of cork that I could use as rocks. We also have these resin rocks from Gamers Grass that I glued all over the base. So we had a nice mix of large and small. I wanted to deliberately create an awkward piece of terrain as I have a four-legged walker and a really cool way to pose and showcase that would be to have all the legs standing on different elevations walking through this terrain. With the rocks glued into place, I came in with some Vallejo modeling compound. This is some earth texture and I filled out the rest of the base, hiding the seams on the gamers grass resin bases and allowing them to seamlessly become part of the environment, as well as helping to blend the cork into place. With all these done, I could actually glue the feet in place and I found some interesting ways to pose the toes gripping onto the environment. And as I awkwardly struggled with positioning these pieces, I decided to come to the final conclusion that I was gonna have one of the legs actually lifted off the ground as if the walker is mid-step. Totally not a response to kind of making a base that I'd made it really difficult for me to put these feet. It's fine, it'll look cool. All right, so we're gonna try and uh, do some spray painting here. I realized I have Vallejo gray and white, so I may as well just give it a shot. See how close I can get to my Zenithaling on my armor just with spray paints, because if I can do that with three rattles, that's gonna save so much time on my Sakura army. And then I just line highlight. Uh, I'll have to be very careful with the white application. I have a feeling I'm gonna need to airbrush Stonewall gray. Let's see how we go. Oh, that is an awful spattery last bit of can, isn't it? After spraying the base with some foundational colors, I wanted the rocks to be a lot darker. So I got a charcoal gray and very roughly painted this patchily across all of the cork. I deliberately left those spray paint colors and some of the cork color in there because I want some really natural color variation on these rocks. To do a similar thing to the ground, I just got some dark brown and stippled that all over the base, just creating more and more areas of variation and different color saturations. For the rocks, I used Vallejo's somber gray and wolf gray to dry brush up and get a nice bluestone look on these rocks. And then after a quick dry brush of Vallejo Earth on all of the ground, I got some Mod Podge and sponged it all over the base, leaving a little gap for a mountain path. I thought that would look pretty cool. Now I will say, for some reason, we copped flack once for calling it Mod Podge. Cause we're like, we're Aussies, you know, we should call it PVA glue. Now this is actually Mod Podge. It says it on the bottle. <laughs> It's literally a bottle of Mod Podge. So uh, for that one commenter, if that was you and you still watch our videos, I just want you to know, relax, buddy. <laughs> it's okay. Everything's can be okay. That aside, we've got some Mod Podge all over this base and uh, we're going to flock it. So that means some grass flocks, a bit of static grass, a bit of green tuft from Woodland Scenics and just a light salt base sprinkle over this whole thing. With all of this delicately applied, I put that aside to dry. We're going to come back to this with laser cut plants and tufts, but for now, let's let that set and we will move on to painting the narwhal. 
So painting my Sakura is a nice Battlefield standard paint job. I start with using Vallejo's Cold Grey and Stonewall Grey to create a blend from the darker color up to the lighter color. This covers all of the armor panels on what I call the external plating. To finish this part off, we just do a little line highlight of a mix of Stonewall and white, and this really makes everything pop, Citadel style. Yeah, you get the nice non-zenithal on every single panel. It really helps illuminate big panels like this. Murray's here. I'm here. <laughs> Thanks, Murray. So, and it about this point, I actually got Murray and Jen's help and we all as a team sat down and painted this model. And honestly, it was a highlight. It's been too long since we've all sat down and just jammed hobby together. It was great. Yeah, many hands make legs light work. I see what you did there. There is a lot of legs on this model. All of the mechanical parts of this model are painted black with a gray highlight. And then we have these nice accent colors. And this is for all the sort of tau gyros and cogs that they have all over their machines. Yeah, the little metal bit bobs that they sort of all have, which sort of defy any sort of aesthetic reason. But yeah, they all, always seem to be painted a metallic color. They're important, right? They're sensors. I, I, don't, I don't know. Someone will let us know exactly. So we paint them up using some nice red metallics from Scale 75 with a little pink metallic highlight on the top. It's rather wonderful. And with the metallic and the white done, I can then come in and do a pin wash. We couldn't find the Agrax Earthshade, which is what I typically use so we used Vallejo Smoky Ink and some Airbrush Flow Medium to get that sinking nicely into the recesses. And this did the trick perfectly. Yeah, no, worked well. Now that these pieces were painted, I could go to the joy of assembling this model. And I have to say a shout out to Hagia's printer here. One of the features that they talk about is dimensional accuracy. And something I noticed about this print is all the pieces were the shape and size they were supposed to be. All the pieces fit in snugly. Everything was just nice. Oh, no no shrinkage or anything. There wasn't shrinkage. Like, ah. as you can see, these, these fit neatly. I'm not like, they're firm, but that's how they're intended to be. Uh, I didn't have to bend anything, warp anything or break anything. They all just slotted together. I'm so used to like shrinking or warpage with 3D prints that it was a real pleasure to have that with this. Nice. All right, so we're gonna have this really nice transparent canopy over the cockpit. So I wanna make a really strong and vibrant glow from within. This is the cockpit, everyone's unconscious. They don't need to see what's happening in the cockpit. They're all plugged in. So I'm gonna go for a strong OSL effect in here using some contrast and then a little bit of highlighting. These two tower women are drift compatible. It's a little Pacific Rim reference there <laughs> for you. Solid. So an accent color to my Sakura Tau is this nice pink. So the lenses and the tips of the missiles, as well as a couple of little markings over the vehicle, were painted in red and highlighted up through pink to a nice white dot highlight. And then the lenses were covered in a gloss varnish to make them nice and shiny. Yeah, you had this pink accent on like little bits of the armor of the other models, but here going as the little missile heads, it really looks like little uh, cherry blossom buds. It's kind of cool. The pink on most of my Tao Sakura actually is like the cloth string for their mm. plated armor. So obviously this mechanical model didn't have that. So we had to find a different place. And I love your thought that the missiles are like the, the cherry blossom petals falling from the sky. That's really cool. They're going to blossom and they're going to make the Tao's day. <laughs> Sorry, it's raining, so if this is really loud, hey, Australian winter, it rains all the time. I thought it would be really cool to print these in transparent resin, so I'm going to change the resin on this Hagia's printer. I'm going to print all those special effects in clear resin, but not only that, there's also a glass canopy, so we're going to be able to see into the cockpit of this model with the two pilots, and I've got some ideas for what to do with that later. But I've got to change the resin. Let's just see the process of doing that with this printer. You ready? Oh, you've got to push it down more. Whoops. That, that's it. It's done. That'll now fill and I can set the printer on. I'll come back in about 10 minutes when this is filled up and we'll get going. The transparent print is done and I'm super excited to see what the Hay Gears has done. Historically, I've tried transparent resin printing before and it's always a little bit hit and miss. So let's see. Whoa. That is like crystal clear. I'm gonna wash this up and we'll see how it comes up after it's all cleaned. I'm not sure that this is legal uh, with 3D printing, but it's something 
I love about this printer is these little holes in the bed allow you to really easily and gently without damaging anything just find a spot to get the spatula in and just and you can without even taking off the bed super cleanly being obviously being delicate because you don't want to break your print just remove your print from the print head and then as long as nothing's failed you can just kind of reprint if you're lazy like me it's super easy to use and not having to deal with re-leveling this build plate every time you take it off is amazing you can take it off super easily you just pop this up and it slides out um, not having to like play with screws and stuff is fantastic but uh this is looking really crisp can't wait to wash it and see how it comes up time to wiggle This will clean up nicely and I'll be able to just pop the top and grab what I need. So with the transparent resin washed and cleaned up, I could fit that on nicely and it works a treat. To get it extra crispy, I also put a bit of gloss varnish on it and am really happy with the results. And with the legs of the model assembled, I could also set about finishing up this base. And to finish up the base, it means Tufts laser cut plants and some lovely sakura petal flock scatter that I got in Japan, and then a final touch of some snow effects. Painting transparent resin, there's a lot of techniques or different thoughts of what you could do. For mine, I wanted these to be nice blue Tau energy effects. So rather than going for the blooming bright reds with dark cloudy grays, I actually did a gentle gradient using acrylic inks, going with a smoky black down at the base and then blending through with some really nice aqua blues towards the tip of the missile. Now, obviously with transparent resin, getting a strong color is difficult. So in the areas where the actual source of the energy blast would be, I painted those with acrylic paints. And I think this blend between acrylic painted areas and the transparent resin makes for a fantastic gradient and makes it feel really real. And with all these transparent resin effects done, I could glue them onto the model and we can check it out with our final review. We'd like to give a big thank you to our patrons. It is thanks to you that we can make two videos a week and we love having you along for the ride. If you'd love to see more Tao Sakura, let us know in the patron discord, everyone. Uh, you know we listen to you and we love you. So we want to see that shout out. Or if you want to see desperately, Mari finally get to paint some Tyranids. Well, 10th edition is almost here and you just might get lucky. Woo, Team Tyranids! And we also wanted to give one more thank you to Hey Gears and their new printer, the Ultracraft Reflex. If you're a fan of 3D printing, but not a fan of the messy hobby side of it, this printer is a great printer for you. It really brings ease of use and professionalism to the home hobby workbench. Check out the links in the description and go have a look at what Hay Gears have to offer. And a quick thank you to Piper from Piper Makes for sending us the model. I think the proof is in the pudding with this model of just how good 3D printing has gotten. All right, everyone, I hope you have enjoyed this video. It's been great to revisit the Sakura Tower and I will be coming back to them soon. A special shout out to Piper Makes for sending us all the files for the Narwhal. I absolutely love this model and I'm so glad to have got to build it. Also like to give a big thank you to Hey Gears. Please check out their 3D printer. The links are in the description. It's been a real pleasure working with something that felt like a professional machine. 3D printing can be a pretty messy and complicated hobby. And if you're more interested in getting great results than you are tinkering with machines, the Ultracraft Reflex is a super professional machine. 
that made the process really easy for me. So if you love the Sakura Tao and the theme, I'm excited to share with you that soon we'll be making some cool bits. That's right, I'll be making a pack of bits so you can make your own Sakura Tao available in a coming video. Until then, why don't you grab yourself a 3D printer and start making an army of your own. Until the next one.